Hurricane Fiona is getting stronger and there is a new tropical wave that everybody in the Caribbean and Gulf Coast of the United States needs to pay close attention to. We also have newly formed Tropical Storm Gaston. That one's only going to affect the fish, but we'll break that one down at the end of the video. First though, I just wanted to say that we are thinking about our friends in Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and the Turks and Caicos as they are dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Fiona. Thank you to all the new subscribers that have joined us as we were tracking this storm for parts of the Caribbean. If you are finding this channel for the first time, we would love to have you in this weather community as we track storms together. Smash that subscribe button, hit the alert bell, and you will be alerted to any time we post new content. Stick around for a couple more minutes. We're going to break down Invest 98L. That is the disturbance east of the Caribbean now that's going to bring nasty weather to the Windward Islands over the next couple of days. And then development likely into potentially a very strong system in the Caribbean. That's the one that everybody from the Yucatan Peninsula to Cuba, Jamaica, and then all of the Gulf Coast has to pay close attention to over the next week to 10 days. Here is the latest on Hurricane Fiona, just an unreal satellite presentation as it opens up its eye again. It continued that westward jog right into us in the Turks and Caicos. You see all the towns around, again, just devastating as this is a major hurricane now. Again, it clearly looks like that. The eye opening up again as of this recording just after 3 o'clock Eastern time with the thunderstorms bubbling up and you have more thunderstorms going around it was completing its eye wall replacement cycle where it tears down its own eye and then rebuilds it back and then becomes stronger we are likely going to see this make a run for a strong category four hurricane as it gets close to bermuda post what you are watching from the comments i would love to see where you are tuning in from and also any thoughts you have on a specifically invest 98l that's the one the disturbance just outside of the caribbean Again, we have great conversations on this channel. I would love to know your thoughts as we continue to track the weather together here. This is the official forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center on Fiona. Again, as it continues to strengthen as it remains a Category 3 major hurricane with winds of 115 miles an hour as we take this up over the next couple of days. Note that we get to Category 4 status. Look at that, 130 mile per hour forecast, and there is the opportunity for that to overachieve those numbers. The environment gets much better, as you might imagine, with a strengthening hurricane. You can see the outflow there, the storm breathing very well. One of the things here with that continued westward jog, it was extremely awful for us in the Turks and Caicos, but... For us in Bermuda, it's trending a little better. We're still in the cone, still something to be extremely mindful of. I'll show you some high-res radar in a moment here to kind of give you the timeline of when this is going to get close to us. But notice passing by Bermuda as a strong Category 4 hurricane. Remember, impacts are felt outside of this cone. The other thing to note, if I have anybody tuning into our channel from Canada, this could be one of the strongest storms to ever impact parts of Canada. Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, we need to be paying close attention because the potential for a hurricane, a strong one at that, is going to be bearing down on us as we move towards the 23rd and 24th of September. You see the cone here. That is Nova Scotia. That is Newfoundland. That is forecast to be dealing with a Category 2 hurricane at this time. Again, this is the forecast point on the 24th of the morning of the 24th with sustained winds of 100 miles an hour, gusts even higher than that. So this is going to be a very nasty storm, it looks like anyway, for Canada, even as it gets well inland as we continue through Canada, a very strong post-tropical system. I wanted to show you the high-res solution here from the Hurricane Wharf. It's one of the hurricane models from the National Weather Service and NOAA. Again, this has been doing a great job forecasting the westward jog towards the Dominican Republic and then forecasting the continued westward movement for the Turks and Caicos, unfortunately. We're fast-forwarding now until the evening of the 22nd. So this is now the evening of the 22nd into early Friday the 23rd. This is overnight now. Right over here is Bermuda, and you see there the center, at least in this solution, still keep your guard up on this, but the center, at least according to the Hurricane Wharf, is off towards our west with the nastiest winds packed around that. Now, it's not going to be a total walk in the park. I think we're going to have 
some nasty rain bands coming through and you see the yellow here we are well within tropical storm force winds sustained with higher gusts so again it's still going to be nasty on bermuda no matter how this shakes out but this is certainly better than what it's looked like over the past couple of days. All right, here we go. This is INVEST 98L. INVEST stands for Area of Investigation, and then the L is the Atlantic designation. The Hurricane Center runs from 90 to 99 and then continues its loop over. If you've ever wondered what an INVEST was, it's just a disturbance that we are paying extremely close attention to. So first up, this is disorganized there are thunderstorms around it it is very far south we are looking at this thing close to the south american coastline so that in and of itself should keep development on the slower side but still some nasty weather coming into the windward islands over the next couple of days so trinidad and tobago make sure that you are paying close attention as some gusty thunderstorms are going to be coming into you regardless if this makes tropical depression or tropical storm status by that point it is possible that that happens, but regardless, some heavy rain and some stronger winds and individual thunderstorms are going to be possible. The one thing we're really going to watch closely here is what the interaction with South America does to its potential development. Again, it is very far south. The further south these storms are, the harder they are, the harder it is for them to kind of wind up because of the Coriolis force becoming a little bit less the closer to the equator it is. So that's one of the factors we're watching. There's also still some wind shear courtesy of Hurricane Fiona out in this general area south of Puerto Rico and into the Eastern Caribbean. So with those two things in mind, this one might take a little bit of time to develop. Unfortunately, though, the conditions get much, much better once we start to get out into the area of the Dominican Republic, into Haiti, and then into Jamaica, really in the central and western Caribbean. So I'm going to start with the ensemble plots. We are going to get more spaghetti models soon because now that it's designated in Invest, the Hurricane Center starts to run the individual models. But And this is what I mean that everybody needs to be on guard. There is a ton of spread. That means there's a ton of uncertainty. Again, the GFS ensembles have this either making a landfall in Central America or going out to sea after impacting the Dominican Republic again. So a huge spread. We are definitely going to fine tune that again. Hurricane hunters are going to get up in this thing on Wednesday and we're going to start to get better data as a result. But again, it just goes to show that I don't want you to pay attention to a single model run just yet. I'm going to show you a couple, but it's nothing to get too terribly freaked out with at this time. It does look like we are going to have a strengthening system in the central to western Caribbean, potentially lifting up into the Gulf or southwest Atlantic. It is just way too early to tell where this thing is going to go. But again, conditions look likely that we are going to have a pretty strong storm in the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico in the next 7 to 10 days. So this is the European run now on Pivotal Weather. Great site to get your models from as well if you like nerding out with us and looking at how these models come to be. This is the European run from Tuesday morning, the 12Z run, and you see that's where Fiona is. So that is not the storm in question. We're going to quickly take this out here as I scrub across the next few days. And then here is our little system rolling into the Eastern Caribbean. We are now looking at... September 23rd, so as Fiona heads toward Canada, we're going to be watching this potentially develop as we move towards the Eastern Caribbean. Week at first, again, it looks like this will stay south of Puerto Rico, and for the most part, the Dominican Republic. Notice how the European keeps this relatively weak. Again, it could be because of land interaction with South America, also that wind shear as brought on by Hurricane Fiona still having some impact but watch what happens as we get closer to that parallel, to be parallel with Jamaica. We start to get this thing really ramping up. So really, again, Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, Cuba need to be on guard for this. And then eventually Florida. And then anywhere across the Gulf of Mexico. I know that that is a large spread right now, but there's just so much uncertainty. And it's just way out into the future to know how these steering currents are going to come to be over the lower 48, which is ultimately going to dictate where this storm is going to go. 
All right, on to the GFS now, and the GFS has been performing a little bit better of late after it's done a lot of wacky things. Again, it's never a good thing when you have the GFS, European, and a lot of other major models on board. That is why we are pretty confident that we are going to get a storm somewhere in the Central Caribbean, and then where it goes from there is the uncertain part. So here we go. We are looking at now... The 25th into the 26th of September, likely a strengthening tropical storm at the very least. Again, here is Jamaica. Here are the Cayman Islands. So on that parallel, potentially impacting Jamaica directly. So again, we need to be watching out. Still too early to tell. And then it makes that northerly turn into Cuba as a very strong storm. And then this is what we keep on watching for Florida and the eastern Gulf Coast. Keep on saying it. Everybody along the Gulf Coast, though, needs to watch out. If steering currents slow down and there's a lot of room for that to happen, that's going to allow it to be able to potentially move a little further west. That's why I keep on saying everybody needs to keep an eye on this. Keep it here on this channel. We've got you covered, and we're going to be watching this every step of the way. There is newly formed Tropical Storm Gaston expected to remain a tropical storm over the next couple of days as it harmlessly floats around the North Atlantic remaining to the west of the Azores, and again, not messing with any land, and then eventually becoming post-tropical in the cooler waters of the North Atlantic. All right, guys, it has taken a while, but unfortunately, hurricane season has decided to ramp up. We're going to be tracking several systems well into the week ahead. You can continue to come back here for updates. We would love to have you along for the ride as we track the weather together. Again, hit that subscribe button, share this with your friends, we're going to be watching all of these systems closely for our friends in Bermuda. And then again, that big system, the potential one in the Caribbean, everybody along the Gulf Coast states and in the Caribbean need to be paying close attention. If you do live along the Gulf Coast of the United States from Florida to Texas, this is now just a good time to review your hurricane plan. Again, nothing is set in stone with this. This has a few hurdles to clear. But all indications show that this is going to ramp up once it gets into the Central Caribbean. Where it goes is still a mystery because of the steering currents need to come into play. Hurricane Hunter missions into this disturbance start on Wednesday. We'll start to get a better idea of where this could go. But again, until then, it's never a bad idea just to start those preparations and hope you don't have to use them. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We're watching it closely. We'll catch you next time.